All right, what's going on guys? Welcome everybody to the video. Today is the full PUBG movie. I have compiled all of the cutscenes and cinematic trailers and put them into one video for you to enjoy so you can get a grasp on the entire storyline. If you guys do enjoy today, please make sure to give the video a like rating and subscribe if you're brand new, but other than that, enjoy the video. When I was a boy, I watched my world explode. I thought I lost everything in that fiery nightmare. But what I found in the rubble of my childhood awakened me. I was the first lone survivor of Erangel. But I would not be the last. The island showed the scared boy that he could be a survivor. That's what I want for you. To meet your true self. Will you embrace who you're meant to be? Or is this all you are? Will you find a person strong enough to conquer their fear? Or will you die because you were too weak to understand it? Yes, my friend. Everyone is searching for themselves. That search ends here. The place I once called home. Welcome to my battlegrounds. Welcome to the Battlegrounds Tour Agency's Tour of Erangel. Now, the island itself is pretty infamous, but on this tour you're going to get up close and personal with Erangel and see the major landmarks from the ground, just like a real Battlegrounds contestant. Only difference is, all of you get to leave the island alive. While we're down here, we'll also dive into some of the history of the island. Nobody really knows the whole story about what went down here. But with the help of prominent Battlegrounds historians, we've pieced together some of the clues left behind. Now, when people still lived here, there was quite a little community on the island. Farmers, laborers, physicians, teachers, even dock workers made up Erangel's economy, and everyone contributed to keep the island a self-sustained place. Even after the military took control of Sosnovka, life kept on like normal for a time. But as the occupying force got more oppressive and more demanding of the population's obedience, well, things started to escalate. Resistance against the military started to rise up, which caused the military to tighten their grip, and so on. Of course, that all ended in 1965 when the bombs started dropping. Anyway, our first stop on the tour is Kameshki. It might look like a sleepy seaside town, but Kameshki was actually quite important to the resistance, as is apparent by their hidden in plain sight base. This was one of several bases set up around the island to monitor what the military was doing and plan strikes against them. And being so close to Stalber, you can bet they were relaying communications of their own. Speaking of, let's head up the mountain. Stalber is one of the highest points on Erangel, and as such was the perfect spot to set up communications arrays. While we don't know for sure which side of the conflict controlled Stalber, the resistance base in Kameshki and the bunker just down the hill tell us that this area was mostly blue territory. They even flew the flags of their enemy down here to help throw them off their trail. This here is Erangel's infamous crash site. It's nothing compared to that aircraft graveyard down on Sosnovka, but it being so out of place is exactly what makes it interesting. Nobody's quite clear on how the plane went down, but these things don't really have a habit of just falling out of the sky by themselves. That was before flight data recorders were widely used, so we might never know what took her down. But she's part of the island now, and part of the tour. George Bull was a priority for the occupying force, as it housed a large portion of Erangel's population and was the island's most prominent port, with shipping containers full of supplies from the mainland arriving every week. They set up base in the north of the city and put its jail to good use once the blue flag started flying around. Some of you noticed the cameras around. Those are a more recent addition to make sure none of the battleground's action is missed. They get replaced pretty often with all the bullets flying around. Speaking of surveillance and bullets flying, 
That mountain outside of Gatka was a prime place to set up surveillance, or even a sniper nest. It's a pretty safe bet that the Resistance was up there keeping an eye on the Red Eye. That's it for the first leg of our tour. We'll spend the night here in Gatka and start up first thing in the morning. Just remember, the crew does a great job of cleaning up after a battleground, but if you happen to come across a weapon, just assume it's loaded and alert one of your guides immediately. Last thing we need is to cut the tour short to rush someone back for medical attention. The rest of the night is yours. If you're enjoying the tour, be sure to give us a five-star review and tell your friends that it was the Battlegrounds Tour Agency that helped you explore the battlegrounds like never before. Good night. Battlegrounds enthusiasts. I hope everyone had a good rest without having to keep one eye open like a real contestant would. To recap, yesterday we visited the northern parts of Erangel, starting from Kameshki and ending up in Gatka. Today we're trekking back across the island to the eastern shores. So pile back into our authentic Battlegrounds Tour Agency UAZ and let's get moving. Our first stop today is simply known as the Ruins, and is one of Erangel's most historic landmarks. What you're seeing is actually the remaining foundation of a giant castle that predates most other structures on the island. Unfortunately, with resistance bunkers lining its border, it was always at risk of attack, as we can see from the occupation's tanks still lying around. Following the road to the east, we find Rozak, which is pretty much smack dab in the middle of the core island. Economically speaking, Rozak was a nice central hub, as many of the island's major roadways joined up here to make use of its bridges across the river. Now, strategically, if you're looking to keep an eye on enemy movements, the outlooks around the well-traveled city provide pretty reliable information. For people just trying to live their lives, Rozak was quiet enough, and nearby the island's school as well. Rumor has it that the battlegrounds administrator himself attended that school, before the conflict around here got too bad. Oh, Yasnia here was a strange marriage of rural and residential. It's one of the biggest cities on the island, even though it's surrounded by farmland on every border. There were good, hard-working, and humble people here, which probably made it all the more jarring when the military moved in and took over. Humble beginnings or not, it didn't take long for those hayfields to become mortar fields when the conflict escalated. A little southeast of Yasnia, there's an out-of-place structure for what we know about the island. Erangel was known for having a relatively meek and humble population, so whoever built this mansion compound either had some political power or ran one of the island's commercial ventures. Historians believe that the hole blown in the side was from a resistance attack, judging by the photos found in some of the bunkers. Now, for the most part, the battlegrounds are kept as close to natural as possible. What we're about to see is one of the few cases of post-battleground construction on any of the fields. This building here is special to the island. Original construction was abandoned at some point before the bombs, but after Erangel became a battleground, it was decided that this building would serve as sort of a museum, commemorating the Adams' past as well as some of the key influential organizations in Battlegrounds history. Construction is still underway, but will be completed soon, so make sure to take our tour again on your next trip. We've seen military bunkers and outposts all over the island so far, but this one as historians a little baffled. The hillside artillery here would have made a pretty good defensive point for any enemy aircraft coming in from the southern coast of the island, but that direction would have been the allies of the military as well. This spot is a little close to Sosnovka for us to assume the resistance controlled it. Regardless, it makes for an interesting stop on our tour and always gets our guests thinking up their own theories. Historic Erangel wasn't really known for rampant crime, but the military sure made use of the island's prisons while trying to keep control over the population largest of which is coming up here. Prisoners were kept locked up during the night and put to work during the day. Now, normal citizens weren't treated much better, but at least they had a home to go back to once the work was done. That was quite a long day, and we certainly don't want to overwhelm you, so we're going to stop and rest for the night here. Tomorrow, we finish up our tour with some of the major remaining areas of the island. The good news is, each of you gets to spend the night in one of Erangel's historic prison cells. This type of experience can only be had with the Battlegrounds tour range. So remember to leave that five-star review and tell your friends and family all about how you got to experience the battlegrounds like never before. Sleep well, inmates. <laughs> Hello, survivors. How was your stay in Aragale's prison? Today is the last day of our tour, so if you have any remaining questions about the island, be sure to let us know as we move. Yesterday, we saw Rozak, the mansion, the prison, and even the Hall of Fame. Today, we're going to start at the famous Milta power plant pass through Pochinki, check out the old quarry, and wrap up our journey on the island of Sosnovka. Pile into the UAZ and let's get moving. Well, Milta was one of the first nuclear power plants in this area of the world, 
and enabled Erangel to sustain its civilian and military populations. Some historians even speculate that the quarry up the road was used to mine some of the materials that went into building Milta, giving the people of the island plenty of work to do. We know from evidence found around the island that Milta was targeted by the resistance. By the looks of things, they succeeded. The damage wasn't enough to cause any kind of nuclear incident or anything like that, but I'm sure they had a purpose. Another of Erangel's major cities is Pochinki, and if you haven't picked up on the general theme of the island by now, it's also surrounded by farmland. Close to the heart of the island, it's pretty easy to imagine why Pochinki would be fought over. And fought over it was. In fact, curfew posters and red flags still hang all over the city, which served as a strong hint that it's better to just obey. Not everyone just rolled over on command, though. If you thought Pochinki was a hot drop in the battlegrounds, just take a look at all the craters, tanks, and general destruction left in the wake of what went down here. You've no doubt noticed all of the resistance signage around the island. In fact, I'm sure the military wondered how they were getting so many of them past their inspections. Well, the truth was found here in this hideaway warehouse. They printed them right here on the island. This warehouse was more than just a print house, though. Operations were planned, communications were relayed, and it probably served as an easy-to-get-to hideout for those keeping an eye on Sosnovka. Now, the quarry here was a key commercial venture for the island. Stone from here can be found in architecture all across the land. The stone even matches up with some found in the ruins to the north, meaning this site has been in use long before modern Erangel existed here. Even newer structures like Milta Power Plant have stone and brick that seems to have originated here, which suggests that the military either contracted or more likely just forced the workers here to supply their demand. That forced labor could have been a reason for the resistance to target this site for liberation. Nowadays, most of Erangel's visitors make it to the island by plane and uh, parachute, but back in the day, it was more likely you'd take a ferry from the mainland. While most of the island's supplies were offloaded up north in Georgia Port, this is where the majority of the people came and went. That wasn't this little town's only trade, though. Abandoned fishing boats still lined the beach here, and this area and Primorsk were likely home to many of the laborers who worked at the quarry. It also appears to have been home to a pretty large battle between the resistance and the military, as the craters and husks of aquatic vehicles lined the beach to the west. Now, I know you've all been seeing those dead vehicles laying around and wanting to get inside one, so we've got another treat for you. If you wouldn't mind hopping into our authentic Battlegrounds tour agency, BRDM2, we're gonna ride the waves over to Sosnovka Island. Remember that when you're telling your friends and family about how great of a time you had here. The island of Sosnovka was a key factor in Erangel's painful history. Connected to the island by only its two bridges, Sosnovka is where the military established their base from which they'd carry out their plans and overall occupation of Erangel. Now onto the location everyone's been waiting for. Sosnovka Military Base. You know it as one of the bloodiest places on the battlegrounds, but during the Erangel conflict, it was one of the safest places for the military to be. Heavily fortified with soldiers, artillery, and red propaganda, this base easily helped establish the military's hold on Erangel. That's not to say that the resistance never made their way in here. There's strong evidence that points towards one of the military's own guided missiles as the cause for the destruction over at Milta Power Plant. Infiltrating this base couldn't have been an easy task. What historians find most odd is that not even the military base was spared from the bombardment in 65. Maybe they thought it easier to wipe everything out instead of recovering it or losing it to the black market. Might even been some other reason it got leveled, but we may never know for sure. And that's a wrap. Now you all may not be getting the same type of chicken dinner an actual battleground survivor would get, but we do have a catered chicken dinner waiting for you back at the hotel. And remember, your package includes a discount to any of our other battlegrounds tours. So be sure to take advantage of that and get on the waiting list today. We hope you enjoyed your experience with the Battlegrounds Tour Agency, the world's most authentic way to experience the Battlegrounds like never before. I hope my boys weren't too hard on you. But I've been hearing some pretty disturbing rumors. That you've been placing bids for my territory behind my back. Of course, they can't be true, because you know Miramar belongs to me. I'd let you borrow it for your race, but that doesn't give you permission to make new deals on your own. You need to recognize opportunity when it strikes, right? You'd rather the Americans get it. I'd rather you know your place, cockroach. I had to act fast. He, if that Russian bastard wants a battleground on Miramar, he deals with me!
Nobody else. Of course, of course. I was just making arrangements so that you can make a decision. What do you know about him? What has he told you about his plans? I know as much as anyone else, really. He's wealthy, connected. Some say his reach is everywhere. And I think you know as well as I do. He gets what he wants. This is my territory. I get what I want. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I, it just didn't sound like you were being given a choice. I'm the only choice that matters, and my answer is no. You tell him to stay the hell out of Miramar, unless he wants a war. You're right. The Badlands are yours. He should answer to you. I'll get him on the phone. Let me just step outside to get a signal. Beautiful, isn't it? This island was my home. I was born here. Even now, I can feel the cool spray of the ocean across my face. I was born here. This is my home. Full of memories I'll never forget. After all, what bride could forget her wedding day? Were your men who shot Rayan? It would seem not anymore. You don't seem surprised. What have you done? Father! I'm trying to protect your future. This life is no way to raise a family. What did you do? They're coming. Did you see the look on her face when you popped the groom? I meant to hit her. Hit. 
It's Adia. You know this island as well as they do. Hide and escape when you can. Down here! The time to run is over. Sorry for all of this. I sold the island so you could get away. <coughs> Want for nothing. This is my home. I've never wanted to leave. Sadia, once we're out, you have to keep running, even if I cannot. Father. Don't fight me. Run and don't look back. Father. The time to run. He's over. You stand with us, Amir. Enough! He's already bleeding out. Let him die with respect. This man deserves my respect? I worked for him for years. All of us did. He called the shots, and we took them. But it was our hands getting dirty. When your family got rich. We did everything that was asked. And then he tries to send this land right out from under us. Who is he? The man who paid you the gold. The one they call the Russian. Is he mafia? Military? What does he want with Karakin? He wants it for his game. His game? <laughs> Mir, no, no. Tell me you didn't sell us out so some oligarch can build a golf course. This man. I don't know his name. I don't know anything about him. But I promise you. He doesn't play golf. <laughs> I only know what I've heard whispered. They find warriors, mad men, the desperate, the insane. Those with nothing to lose set on each other like dogs, fighting until only one remains. The survivor gets whatever they desire. The Russian makes it so. And do you believe this? Do you know what it would take to pull that off? I do. And you just started a war with them. Down the gun, Sadia. This time is best used to say goodbye to your father. We will honor your father's deal. The island is ours. The money will be yours. Use it as you wish. You're still young. Buy a new home. A new life. I don't want from money. I want to play your game. This island is my home. I know every inch of it. I know which way the wind blows when the tide comes in. I know where the grass grows tall. I know every building. I know every tunnel. 
Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Every secret. I know it all. The winner of your game gets whatever they want? Well, I want my island back, you motherfucker! Welcome to the Battlegrounds Tour Agency's Guide to Karakin. Now, you might know Karakin from its infamous black zone and survivors using sticky bombs instead of doors, but this little island is so much more than a 2x2 two two field of destruction. Take the Jamila Textile Operation, for example. Jamila Textiles was by far the most prominent business on the island, replacing farming after a massive drought devastated the economy. Even the octopus fishermen had their land bought out by Jamila's owner, Amir, and left for the mainland. Amir owned damn near the whole island by the time he was done, but reasonable people know that textiles weren't what was paying for it. Still, more factories were built, some in obscure locations with only minimal staff even to run them. In fact, there were a couple that were built, opened, and almost immediately closed and boarded up. But more on those later. Our first stop is Al Haik, one of the more uh, quaint towns on the island. Al Haik had an important job, though. The workers here were responsible for refining the core pigments set up the road to Hadika Nemo for processing into dye. We'll be heading up that way next. From what the books show, Hadika Nemo was the main port that Jamila Textiles used to import raw materials. It was also the place where all the factory's dyes were mixed, as you can see from the multicolored vats here. Now on the way to Al Habar is the first of those boarded up factories I talked about. They patched up the walls after the last battleground, but sure would be interesting to see what's going on in there. I got a feeling it wasn't making textiles. Next up is Alhabar, one of the biggest cities on Karakin. Alhabar was the city closest to many of the farmsteads on the island, and thus used to be a pretty big economic area. After the farmers had left and Jamila bought up their land, the city was mostly inhabited by factory workers. Speaking of Jamila, up on the hill over there is the main Jamila textile factory. Many people questioned this location for the main factory, as it was pretty far from both the main port cities and even a bit of a haul for Al Habar. But when you're trying to be discreet, it makes perfect sense. What, did I forget to mention that Amir was a smuggler? This whole island is one big smuggler's den with tunnels carved into the mountains all over the place. There supposedly ways in across the land, but you have to have the right uh, equipment to knock on the door, if you know what I mean. This factory here is actually sitting on one of the major tunnels that Tenebris used to store their pilfered prizes. Speaking of Tenebris, let's head west and I'll tell you more about them. This is the port city of Barsa here. Did you notice an ominous octopus logo sprayed all over town? This was the mark of Tenebris, who were smugglers, pirates, gunrunners. <laughs> if it's shady, they probably had their tentacles in it. We know now that Amir was the head of Tenebris and used the textile business as a front, giving Tenebris easy access to shipping lanes for piracy, a legitimate reason for moving cargo, and a way to launder some of those illicit earnings. If you heard about the disappearance of the SS Summerland and all the weapons it was carrying, that was them. Not a bunch you want to mess with. While their mark is pretty prominent here, the main Tenebris hideouts are said to be in the mountains. Not much to tell about our last city, Bashara, but people do need a place to live. This western town was mostly residential, with apartments and homes largely occupied by factory workers. There is one more interesting point to show you before we wrap up, though. Remember what I said about Tenebris? Well, let's just say that freight ships don't generally have a habit of beaching themselves. As for what happened to Tenebris, Amir, or the people of the island, uh, that's a little tougher to say. All we know is, whatever happened, Karakin's story ended with the battlegrounds. That's it for this tour. Friendly reminder that anything you found on the island must stay on the island. And one tourist try to smuggle a gold bar off a few trips back. Crazy what you'll find in these old places. We hope you enjoyed your experience with the Battlegrounds Tour Agency, the world's most authentic way to experience the Battlegrounds. Of the 
what you are about to see is real. One possible actual members of the families have participated in recreating events. Viewer discretion is advised. They called it the happiest place ever. But for some, it was anything but. When esteemed billionaire Carl Johann Lin opened his prehistoric park of the future, he had no way of knowing that his own future would be one of bankruptcy, humiliation, and death. Was it just a series of unfortunate accidents, a family curse, or was it the work of a deranged boy caught in his father's shadow? You think you know the story. What you hear tonight might just change your mind. The day was July 24th, the year 1972. Families had flocked from all over Europe to be the first to see Dino Land. And what they saw would terrify them. Uh-oh. Bad news, folks. You might want to rethink that family vacation. Families visiting Dino Land looked on in horror as the lovable character Alex the T-Rex was cut in half. The newly introduced dino train hit and killed one of the park's mascots, the lovable T-Rex, an actor playing Alex, a character named after Lynn's own son. I told him, didn't I say? Stupid. I told him, only I get to wear the suit for father. The police report suggests the mascot had stepped in front of the train, apparent suicide. But can we be certain? After all, there was only one witness young Alexander Lind himself, a boy described by some as peculiar. Now, have you seen Alex? But not the dinosaur. Lind's creepy son. I don't know what's scarier, getting cut in half by a train or going to the Lind house for a chicken dinner. Like <laughs> <laughs> what is the Lind Corporation planning on doing for the families affected by this horrible tragedy? The main lawyers have advised me not to discuss dino life. Lynn's dog plummets as more lawsuits are made public. Tragedy followed young Alex wherever he went. The following year, another accident. His sister, prize-winning equestrian Camilla Lind, fatally injured when she fell from a horse while out on a ride with her brother. No, no, don't talk about Cammy. You didn't know her. You didn't know. Some began to talk of a family curse. Others suggested there was something wrong with the boy. While still grieving over their loss, the Lind family suffered another tragedy, Lind himself. Unable to get to his medication in time, the patriarch suffered a massive heart attack. Train dismemberment, death by horse, and a lovable green dinosaur. Some stories have it all, but this one has a happy ending. After two decades of silence, Alexander Lind has announced he's selling the island of Vikendi. To whom? And for what price? That we don't know. For now, the identity of the mysterious buyer remains unknown. Oh, you'll know. One day, you'll know. Father wanted everyone to play his game. But I found a new father. And I like his game much better. Winner! Winner! Chicken! Dinner! No need to adjust your television set. You are not traveling back in time. Hello there. I am Carl Johan Lind. Welcome to the Lind Corporation, where we are working on a revolutionary experience right here in Vikendi. This is Dinoland, the prehistoric park of the future. Children will be greeted by Alex, the lovable T-Rex. They can ride my wonder wheel. Uh, that's right, Alex. And eat at Cammy's Bistro. Yum, yum. Or ride on Tato's thrilling mammoth coaster. Oh, no. Don't be scared, Alex. 
All this and more is now accessible on the all-new Dino train. The Dino Land is just the beginning. The entire island will soon be a top-of-the-line resort. We'll have an award-winning winery, an out-of-this-world cosmodrome, and a spa. Dino Land, so amazing. You would rather go extinct than to ever leave.